Okay, good afternoon all. Hope everyone has had uh, a great long weekend break. Uh, let me have a look. Speedy, how you doing, buddy? Uh, so, uh, there was trading yesterday, actually, I noticed. I didn't think there was. So, uh, I did have a look at the chart last night, but it was getting a bit late by the time I got home. I was away for a, a long weekend. So, Andy, how you doing? So, we've got a bit of a sell-off this morning. Which It's been a while since we've had this. We seem to have had a lot of sideways stuff lately. Uh, I mean, it's literally just been going sideways. But we've had quite a drop. Now, to me, that looks like two legs down from yesterday's highs. I've got that leg there to yesterday's lows. Uh, sorry, yesterday's lows. Uh, and then from here, we seem to have a little bit of sideways with a break and we've come down and literally we are bouncing three times, one, two, three times, right off that measured move. So I know Mac doesn't talk about what's happened in previous days, but I mean, you can't deny that, can you, the way it's bouncing. Uh, it's definitely, we've got a leg down and a sort of a break and then we sort of had a couple of attempts to go higher. Uh, but it does look like two legs. Uh, be interesting to see what what's going to happen today. Whether we're going to do any more, or whether we're going to uh, push up. It's hard to say, really. But but it does look like two perfect measured legs down. So uh, just trying to think where could you have got in there. The trouble is, when it's doing this, you never quite know how far it's going to go down. Uh, I mean, sort of decent looking selling bars would be something like this and this, but. Uh, it's just sort of daisy chaining down really and I've messed around with that channel just to see how it fits uh, ordinarily so you would probably I'd normally take it off that the high and then and then sort of align it there but we're coming out here so I'm not too sure what's going on there but uh, it sort of seems to fit there on the NQ slightly different the top part of this seems to fit and then we seem to have had a break and then we've come back into it so it's a bit it's a bit hard to work out whether it's something bigger, but we've had a break of uh, this channel here. We've had another break of it, so I don't know whether we're going to come down or whether we're going to start to push up. It's hard to say, really. Uh, are you having trouble signing to Apex on Ninja? I'm not personally. Uh, no issues for me. Anybody else having trouble signing in? So let's give me a second. I was just looking at something on. What is this? Okay. Um, uh, I'm from UK. I can't sign in since yesterday. Uh, I'm not sure about that, bud. Uh, uh, you may have signed in since yesterday. I had a look at the charts last night. I actually signed in last night. Uh, and I had no problems. Anybody else had problems today? I'm not too sure. Just check your settings. Failing that, just just uh, just drop a line to Apex and find out why. You're not you're not new to this, are you? Because if 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 you originally when you're setting it up, sometimes you can get some teething problems. Uh, exponential. How you doing, bud? Uh, so no, I'm not too sure. My login worked as usual. JP. No. Uh, Anybody else got spooked by Max April Fool's Day joke? Did he really? I don't even, I don't know. <laughs> did, did he really? I'm going to have to go back and have a look now. Uh, he had me going. <laughs> did he really? <laughs> no, I, I, I have noticed. I got, I got back sort of, uh, what time was it? Sort of, I don't know, tea time, UK time yesterday. I got back from my trip away, so yeah, he said he was retiring. It was his last. Did, did he really? <laughs> the little devil. <laughs> oh, I'll have to go on. Look, I'm, I'm glad he's got a sense of humour. Sometimes he does come over quite straight, doesn't he? Uh, I believe him, but then kept missing. Uh, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm glad he's got a sense of humour. Sometimes he does come over very straight, doesn't he? And he doesn't seem like he's got that side of him. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, you forget, don't you, April Fools? First of first of April. 
Uh, oh dear. So I hope everyone had a good weekend away anyway, uh, <clears throat> or a good weekend. Uh, I went away down south, down to Winchester. Uh, it was quite nice, relaxing weeks. Just nice to get away, isn't it? Uh, got in the car. My wife started driving. Uh, I cracked open a nice bottle of uh, gl- uh, uh, Glen, 12-year-old Glenfiddich, and I had my little whiskey glass in my pocket, so I had a whiskey on the way down there. Uh, so I don't know what's going on this morning. This is a bit unusual. Uh, we don't seem to have anything. We haven't had a really sort of strong move like this for a while, really, I don't think, have we? Uh, or maybe there was one yesterday. Uh, I'll tell you what else I noticed as well. I did watch a couple of videos last night. I watched Penguins. Anybody notice Penguin? He's marking a, uh, he's trading the NQ thousand tick chart as well, which is interesting. He said uh, there seemed to be a lack of trades on the ES. Uh, I got the same feeling. I know we've discussed this, haven't we, over the last couple of weeks, that it does seem to be... Uh, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I'd just be speculating. I've got no idea why this trade seemed to have drifted off a little bit. But, uh, you know, we've discussed looking at the NQ, looking at the CL uh, and a few others. But uh, it was interesting to know it, notice he trades the NQ1000 tick. So I've got the NQ1000 tick up on another screen. I'm just going to have a look at it. Uh, I've got the NQ1500 tick, as you can see on the left bottom here. Uh, but one thing I like about the thousand tick is obviously the smaller the tick chart, the easier it seems to be able to manage manage your moves. Uh, obviously, the you know the lower the tick size, the lower the ATR it seems to be easier to manage. So market is oh market's been out five minutes. Uh, so it's hard to know what's going on here now. Whether we're going to continue down or not, I don't know. I don't know if anything's impacted this at all. Not that I'm aware of. We have got some news coming up. In fact, I'll mark that. Uh, what time is it? Uh, uh, 1500. Which is in about 25 minutes. Okay, we're gonna have to keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> I just want to go and watch that video now of Max. Uh, so it's hard to know what's going on. So we've had this channel. It depends on where you see a break. You may have had a break. <clears throat> I don't. It's hard to tell, but it does seem to be fitted in there. So I'm going to consider that the break. Uh, and we've clearly made a new low, so it's hard to know whether we're going to continue down. Sometimes when you don't think it go down anymore, it just continues. But uh, we are feathering off a bit. <clears throat> it's at the very beginning. Uh, when you say very beginning, you mean the very beginning of a big move down. I mean, we've had lots of up. I mean, it's been up, 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 hasn't it? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it was only a few weeks ago we came into this uh, 5,000 area. Uh, and now we've had, what, about a 40-point move, and we're still 250 points in there. Oh, Max thing. I got you, I got you, I got you. Oh, uh, okay. It's at the beginning. I got you. I'll have, to have, I'll have a look later. Sorry, mate. I thought you meant this, this move. Uh, what is going on here? So, uh, channel down. We've got a break. Uh, what are we doing? This does this look like it's bottoming? It kind of does, but... Who knows? Let's remove that. So we've had definitely two legs down from yesterday's highs, leg there and a leg there. So the trouble is when it's like this, when you zoom in, you miss half the picture. Let's just get this down here so I don't forget it. It was great, was it? <laughs> I gotta have a look because he has he has talked about retiring. He is gonna retire, isn't he? Uh, uh, from what I can gather, seems to be uh, around a couple of years. But then he is on about maybe coming back uh, and just doing a, a couple of days. So I don't think he'll completely disappear. Whether you know whether he'll trade a little bit and maybe just correspond with with the email. It's hard to say, really.
Do you know what I'd love him to do before he went? One day a week <coughs> is do a live stream. Not necessarily take any trades, but just sit and talk about what he's seeing. You know, maybe I'd normally take that or I'd take that. You know, just 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 to sort of get into his head while he's looking at, because that's one thing we never really see uh, inside Max's head and what he's thinking when he's looking at this. It'd be nice to have him just one day, just to chat with what's going on. Invite him as a guest. I'm. <laughs> uh, oh, he's probably got better things to do. It would be lovely though, just to have him stream for the day and just to have a talk about what he's seeing. Uh, hey Sam, I noticed you got another payment. You've hit your payment level. Good on you, mate. Uh, you've had two then, see? So it wasn't long ago. You go, you hadn't had. You hadn't had one now. You've had two. So good on you, mate. Congratulations. Uh, I've got these on the go. I've got one uh, about seventeen hundred. Another one about thirteen hundred. First of March, first of April. Yeah, good. Good on you, mate. It it does. It gives your spirits a lift. It does get a bit monotonous sometimes when you're constantly putting money in. Uh, I've stopped trading uh, evaluations just for a while. I've been trading them stupid. I was looking at one of my streams last week and I just seem to go stupid with evaluations. I just try and hit stupid home runs. I don't quite know why. Uh, so I'm deciding just to leave evaluations just for a couple of weeks. I want another payment first uh, and then I'm going to start trading them just, just normally but maybe just three contracts instead of two. I do get stupid with them for some reason. Uh, what are we doing here? Uh, H D D D. D. Uh, I finally received my payment. Good for you, mate. Uh, took full seven business days. Yeah, I don't know why some people seem to get them quicker than others. I don't know, but good on you, mate. You've got it anyway, so good for you. Avils have almost no risk, so it's easy to say. Yeah, it is. I just get silly uh, Akitri with them. I, the trouble is, when they're so cheap, it can get you into bad habits. I go from one extreme to the other where I seem to be very careful and strict with me trades. And then when I do evaluations, I just go stupid. I try and it home runs on them, you know what I mean? I, I go for 10 contracts. Trouble is, if you get it wrong with 10 contracts, you can blow an account in a matter of a minute or two uh, really quickly. You know, I've gone through sort of four or five or six in a day where I've just added another one and tried to hit an home run. And it's just, it's, it's not good, really. It, it's getting me into bad habits. So what I'm going to do is just trade these two PAs until I get another payment. And then I'm just going to add maybe three or four, but I'm just going to trade them exactly the same. I'm, I'm, I'm going to add maybe three or four contracts, but I'm going to stop going for 10 contracts because it's just, I mean, the way I trade them, you may get one in 10 and it's just, it's stupid, really. Yeah, I know I can, bud. I know I can. But for some reason, I just get stupid lately. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, just trying to hit home runs. It's stupid, really. It's not ideal. I mean, they are cheap. I agree with Keitri. They are cheap. And, and it's it, it's easy to take silly risks. You know, if you're risking $200, you're going to be a lot more careful. If you're risking $20 then we, we do tend to go stupid. I suppose it's it's human nature to a degree, but the trouble is you just keep blowing one after another. I've done 400, I have. I've spent so much time just throwing money at it, it just to try and get stupid, just, you know, just to try and hit home runs. So I, I absolutely agree that to up the contract size, maybe to three or four contracts and do it like that. Uh, Sam, I've got to the point where I have had more money from trade than I've spent. Good for you, mate. Uh, you've really kept control of that, so that's good. Because I haven't yet, mate. Uh, I haven't yet. Uh, I'm not far off, but, you know, I haven't. Uh, but good for you, mate. You've really kept control. I I've just gone stupid. I I've got a really silly side to me sometimes, which, you know, I can sit here for four hours and not take a trade. And as soon as I seem to get my hands on an evaluation, I just seem to go daft. Uh, so I, I'm just going to have to try and I think trading is, there's so many different levels to trade, isn't there? There's different sort of, I don't know, different nuts and bolts to the, to the package. 
uh, and certain sides of it I've got quite well. For some reason now, I still haven't had it. When I lose a trade or lose two trades, it's not affected me at all, period. It's gone. I can lose two trades today and walk away easily. Now, I've gone from one extreme to the other, but I've still got that stupid side where I, it, yeah, like you say, it is like paper money. Uh, but it's just, it's not sensible and it, and it can get you into bad habits. So I'm not putting another penny into it now for the next few weeks until I get another payment. And then I'm going to add three or four, but just trade them exactly the same uh, when I'm trading my normal accounts. Because the trouble is sometimes I'll go, I'll trade this on an evaluation, uh, but not a PA account. I really should be trading them based on exactly the same information, but I'm going to trade a little bit more, maybe three or four contracts. Uh, but it's just, it gets you into bad habits and, and it is like just throwing money away. You do, you know, I, I've done six or seven in a day and you just throw in a couple of hundred dollars away. Uh, it's, it's stupid really. So I don't know, maybe I just have to get it out of my system, but it's, it bugs me when I do that. I can go from being really careful to being absolute careless. Uh, and that's the downside to having these evaluations really cheap. Did you about that other prop firm that's gone down? Uh, my funded trader. Uh, I was browsing YouTube on the way back from my uh, trip away and I noticed. Uh, God, can you imagine having a lot of money stuck in there when it, when, it, when it goes? I'm quite luckily and I feel quite content that I'm with Apex because obviously the bigger the company generally, the longer they've been around, generally they t you think they tend to be a little bit more safe. Uh, ultimately, you never know, really, do you? You never know what goes on in the background, but uh, I'll just keep my fingers crossed. I still wouldn't want to keep a lot of money uh, in any of these prop firms, really. Uh, it was called My Funded, I think it was My Funded Futures, something like that. Yeah, it does, yeah, because I know there was another one that went, there's been a couple, hasn't there? Uh, let me have a look. Is it? I think it's my funded futures. I bet there's a lot of people got money in there, though. Just quickly flick to a Patrick Welland video, uh, and he's saying two months ago he got twelve thousand dollars profit in there. So whether he still has or not, or, or whether he had, just check I got the right one. I found a few just. Uh... Let me just check it is that one. <laughs> it's a simple way uh trade is just to sell when price is below you moving average. Yeah, absolutely. The funded trade are my mistake. Yeah, I wanted to get it right. I don't want to give out duff information. Uh, is the funded future trade gone forever? Let me have a look. Maybe that's not one funded. Yeah, that one there. The funded trader. And uh, that was from four days ago. Yeah. The funded trader. It's gone. Hmm. I don't know why. I believe there were quite a new prop form. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Uh, okay, what's going on here? I don't know. Now, we've got this channel, we had a break. That looks like an overshoot, so we may get a move up. It's just really hard to tell at the moment. I wouldn't know where to start, really. 
But that does look like an overshoot and maybe attempt to go lower, a second attempt to go lower. So I'd suggest this is more likely going to push up back to the EMA, maybe. Uh, but I wouldn't have a clue where to start here, in all honesty. Uh, if you look at the NQ, we've had a channel down there. We've had a break and a new low there. So we're back up to the EMA. Are we coming down again? I haven't got a clue. Eric and Marcos. I, yeah, I seem to remember something about that. Uh, driving a plot for, for a bit. Yeah. Uh, the trouble is, I, I would have suggested you've got to have a fair bit of money behind you because uh, you don't know whether i mean if you if you have a new prop firm you know some people trade multiple prop firms you don't know whether they're going to bring over the, your business in which case you're going to be paying out it's hard to know exactly i mean you've got to rely on a lot of people coming in and failing evaluations that's where they make a chunk of the money uh i'm just guessing that that's where they make a chunk of the money so uh you would think you would have to have some money behind you So just keep it in mind, folks, we've got some news coming up in just under 10 minutes. Uh, what is it? Jolt's job openings. Uh, let me have a look. That ATR is coming down from when it was up here. Uh, I wonder if we're going to have a big move today. So at the moment it's going sideways. I wouldn't know where to start here. I mean, that's an overshoot, which would suggest sometimes we'll make a correction or may, may make a move up. Well, sometimes you look at this, don't you, and you think it's got to move up soon. And then sometimes it's just, you may come down another 20 or 30 points. Really hard to tell. Uh, but I don't like it when it does this because it's hard to read. <laughs> Trouble is, it's so far away from the EMA, isn't it? I mean, usually we like to take our trades back at the EMA, so... Would you take that one? It's hard to say because we look like we're making some bottom. It's so hard to know, really. Uh, uh, Edward, I own a prop firm. Did you really? Interesting. It fail through as it's always raining here. <laughs> uh, Continuing down or what? God, I've no idea. Trouble is, it could just continue to go, couldn't it? Okay, it dropped below there and it picked up some buy orders. Uh, Early 21 EMA and reverse. Mm. We haven't been down here for a while, have we? I mean, that's a big move down, isn't it? 
How far have we come down from the day? From the uh, from where's the open? This is where we opened, wasn't it? Uh, not as much as you think. Sometimes uh, it's fifty six points, so it's it's a it's a so maybe we haven't had for a bit. Oh, yeah. oh, so we've come down here and we've only got to this level here, depending on where you look at this. So that to me, uh, I would have suggested we would have likely had a break there. Depends whether you think this is a channel we've got a touch, a touch, a touch. So I'd say possibly. Uh, and if this is the bottom of it, we've come down. And all of a sudden, if you remember, if you notice, when we, that bar dropped, there was a load of buy orders here. It picked some buy orders up, so it never got close to this bottom. So it makes sense to have a break. Trouble is... So, you know, I don't know whether it's me or not, but whenever we get a big move down like this, I'm always waiting for the move up. Sometimes it just doesn't happen, does it? But yeah, uh, I'll mention it again. I don't know if anybody noticed, but Penguins trade in the 1,000 tick chart of the NQ as well as the 2,000 tick chart of the, the ES. Uh it's the first time I noticed it last night. I watched this video. Because he's finding uh, finding setups a little bit slim. Slim pickings. So it makes sense. So I've got, as you know, I've got the 1500 tick chart bottom left. I've also got the 1000 tick chart as well. In fact, you know what I'm probably going to do? I was thinking about this last night. I might do a bar by bar at the end of every day or later on maybe early evening for me just on uh i mean there's no point in doing on the es uh, but on the nq i might do it on the nq thousand tick chart uh, just to see if there is any offerings uh, be interested to see i noticed a few people are showing them now <laughs> Okay, so we've had a break there, and there's a bearish bar there. Uh, are we coming down or are we going up? Pfft, who knows? This news is coming up in about three and a half minutes, so I don't really want to get into a into a trade at the moment. Are we going to come down or are we going to start going sideways? God only knows. Yeah, I might. One thing I've never ever done since I started was making any types of videos. I've only ever live streamed. Uh, but it'd be interesting to go through what other charts are available just to see if there's any Pat's trades on those. So I'm just trying to think the best thing to do. I, I think personally, because of the NQ, because the point systems works a little bit. I think sometimes the lower time frames, the lower tick charts, things are a little bit easy to manage. So I might do a quick, a quick analysis. Uh, you'd watch it, yeah. I might do a quick analysis of it and just see, based on, you know, Pat's trading, would there be any trades? Uh, because I, I, you know, we've we've discussed this a while, haven't we? And you know, I'm forever reading comments about people saying, "Where's all the setups?" You know, there's less setups. So. Now, you know, ordinarily you may think we'll trade one thing at a time, but I mean, if we're trading 20 trades on a chart a day, then I'd say, yeah, just focus on the one. But you could sit here for four hours and not trade a trade. So it's not like you can't lend, you know, lend a little bit of concentration to the to the screen next to you. So I'm just trying to think. I, 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 the reason I think I'll probably pick the thousand is because the, the, the penguin guy picks that. And as far as he, <clears throat> he's concerned, he's out of my league. Uh... <clears throat> he's a way better trader than I am. He's, he understands the market a lot better. Uh, and he's a very good technical trader. So I would trust his judgment uh, on the thousand tick. But 
obviously he trades uh, his star, which is almost like Pat's, but it's a slightly bigger scale. It's more, I consider Max as sort of micro surgery, whereas the penguin, the penguin guy is more general surgery, you know, uh, you know, a slightly blown out version, but it'd be interesting to go through the charts and just see what sort of setups you get in a day. Cause if we are struggling to find setups, I think sometime you don't trust your strategy. Yeah, probably. Do you know what I think I, I tend, I, I tend to do whether it's lately or not, but I did go through a phase of it. Uh, I went through a phase of being careless to being over cautious. Now I do wonder sometimes whether having the NQ as like an anchor chart helps me more or hinders me more. Uh, I think that's only something I could think with time, but I do like the fact that it gives me more of a, more direction. So if I'm looking for a short and the NQ is looking maybe more bullish, I'll tend to leave it. So it helps me more in that case. So I think it's, it's more beneficial than not. I think it saves me more money than than not you know than not because it, it's it's like another opinion but yeah i agree with you to a degree there adnan uh i do get sort of over cautious sometimes probably i i i i will say i definitely probably look into things a little bit more you know they say don't think do and i tend to probably think a bit too much uh that's interesting we got this news now i thought well that might be a nice setup there lovely second entry short uh yeah, ordinarily a trade like that might be a beautiful trade to take. We've had a break, two nice legs up, uh, but it's 20 ticks. Uh, I do love it. Nice second entry short, uh, but it's massive in it in all fairness. So. Uh, so if you'd have took that tick below, you'd have had not quite two points. Mm, maybe not. I do like that though, second entry short. Uh, but yeah, I think I, uh, I, I suppose there's a certain amount of, when you get in a trade, there's a certain amount of being paranoid, isn't there? Uh, you know, sometimes you get into a trade and then you start questioning things. Am I, what am I doing? Is this right? Where is it likely to go? And I think, I think a lot of that is probably quite normal when you sort of see, I'm still relatively new. I've been trading coming up three, it'd be three and a half years in May. So in all fairness, it's still very, very young in my journey. You know, I'm still, I'm still learning. I'm still improving, but I'm getting to the level now where my skills have got better enough to make more money than I lose. So that's always, you know, if, 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 if the scales tip in your favor and the psychological side seems to have been taking care of itself lately. So I think I'm in probably the best place I've been in since I started. You would expect that anyway. Uh, but yeah, sometimes I do get in and I think, oh, I've got a point and a half here. Shall I get out? I'm guaranteed a point and a half or do I risk for an extra couple of ticks? So yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, you know, I have got those, those little doubts, you know, that little voice on the shoulder thinking, oh, if you get out now, you can guarantee yourself a point or a point and a half. And, uh, but I think as these emotions start to get more and more in check, I think a lot of that will start to, to, to drift, but you know, as we all know, trading is, is, is a massive journey and it's a journey that takes time, you know, to, to really figure out what's going on and, and, and to trust yourself and get confidence and belief in yourself. There is a higher low there, uh, but at the moment, because it's been so bearish, I think I'm just a little bit unsure about thinking about taking long trades just yet because it could trigger you and then come down uh but I think a lot of that should take care of itself with time and experience. You know, every every month you sit on these charts, you get better and better. Uh, you know, with the odd trip up and hiccup in between. Uh, but I, I like the fact that it takes time because I know if I'm earning decent money in a, in a year or two's time, I'll have earned it. You know, I'll have I'll have earned my right to be able to be where I, where I am. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna do that. I think just do a quick sort of ten minute bar by bar on what I'm seeing, just to just to see whether I think some of these other charts are worth looking at. I I can't see a downside to them, 
but uh, I think sometimes a little bit of back testing, just going through them uh, for ten minutes of a night, will, will obviously then show me whether it's worth whether they're worth doing or not. But I'm noticing more and more people. I've noticed uh, Thomas Wade now is looking at them. Whether he's traded them or not, I'm not sure. But I notice at the end of a couple of his videos, he's looking at the CL and the NQ. So I think everyone's realising, everyone who trades Pats is realising setups seem to be a lot less lately. Uh, and you either just sit here and let it go by, or you may look at other options. And as we know, uh, trading Mac style, you can trade on any time frame. So he tells us. So, so you know, maybe it's time to start looking with a little bit more of vengeance. So I think uh, uh, maybe later or maybe tomorrow I might just do 10 minutes, quick video 10 minutes and just talk what I'm seeing and just see where we end up. Uh, but I'm going to trust the fact that Penguin Guy is looking at the thousand tick. I think I've noticed that the lower the tick, the easier the, the money side is to... You know, you can see that on a 500 tick chart, you can see the movements of the tick on a 2000. It's, it's not as much as it. We seem to be, uh, I think it's harder to manage a risk a bit less. Okay, so news is sorted. So are we moving up now? Possibly. So we've had this channel, we've had a break, and we've had two legs down to a new low, so we can't argue. Depending on how you look at that, this is certainly a break anyway. It's like a correction, isn't it? Two legs up and then down we go again. So what I'd like to do, though, is get above this level uh, before I'm sure, because we could come up to here and bounce a little bit and do a bit of that. I'd like to get above here before I start to think about maybe looking for longs. Okay, so we seem to have had a bit of a move up there, whether this is a break. Uh, I don't know yet. Oh, incidentally, guys, that 80% off and the one day to pass finishes uh, today, is it? What time is it? Uh, I think lately it's usually about, isn't it, 4.59 Eastern Time, something like that. Uh, I'll soon tell you. Uh, yeah, there we go. Six hours and 51 minutes left, uh, which takes us to, yeah, yeah be, I think it's 4.59. Uh, and then we'll have something else. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm guessing possibly the 71. Uh, we'll see. So we've got a channel, what looks like a channel here, with a break. Are we now coming further down? It's so hard to tell, really. 
Uh, we could continue on down or we could push up so hard. Uh, there is a little bit of a lower high there, but I'm just not sure about this, whether it's going to push back up or, or what. I've got no idea. Uh, not, and if I took that, I'd be going trading right in the middle of here. Now, it may work or it may not, so I'm not doing nothing. It's a bit far away from that EMA. If I'm going to take one like that, I prefer that body up there, really, giving us a little bit of distance. Just made a lousy ninety dollars trading cash account. But my hands won't stop shaking. <laughs> I I, th I think a certain amount of nervousness is a good thing, uh, especially if it just goes to show really tra trading your own money. <laughs> I tend to think, well, I have traded my own money before when I first started, and, and in all fairness, it didn't last long. Uh, I think I put about 3,000 in there, maybe a bit more. I can't remember now. Uh, but, yeah, it didn't last long. Uh, I can't remember when I was nervous or not. Probably. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, a certain amount of nerves, I think, is okay. Real money chasing. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. It, it, it must do. <clears throat> I haven't traded real money for, for nearly three and a half years. but it, it, Well, for three years, but it must do. Uh, it must do. You know, what I'd like to do is is get a little bit out, get a few payments and slowly start to build my own. But I am going to maybe trade one contract per $5,000. So I'm going to be extra cautious, which I think, I mean, if let's say, for instance, uh, where's the ATR at the moment? OK, let's say two and three quarter points. So uh, trading one contract, let's say trading two contracts, uh, $275. So it's half of that, isn't it? So I don't know, let's say 130 $135 uh, trading on, so if you trade $5,000, 10% is 500, 1% is 50. You'd be trading about 2.5%, somewhere around about that, 25 to 3%, which uh, I think it's okay. I, I don't think uh, you'd, want, you'd want to trade much more than that. So I think one contract per $5,000, uh, I think is probably okay. Uh, God, are we continuing down some more, are we? Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely different than Apex, isn't it? There's no two ways about that. Uh, I mean, really, if we're trading a prop account, uh, sorry, a, a, a PA account, it's only really cost us $140, isn't it, for that account? So that's really, I mean, you know, obviously... You've got to add an evaluation to that, but it's not a lot, is it? $160, $170. When we're trading with a 2500 drawdown, which is like we would be trading if it was our own money. So 
there's obviously a lot less risk there. So what is going on here? Let me just check. There's nothing larger going on. Uh, possible. I just don't want this big vacant area here. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that at the minute. Yeah, it's not telling us a great deal. We've had this channel on the break two pushes down to a new low. Uh, we get a couple of legs up, maybe trigger some shorts and push up and come down again. So I don't, I don't really know what we do here in all fairness. So it's just going to be sitting and waiting. There was a lower high which did work, but for me, it's just a little bit hit and miss that one. It's hard to know really what's going to go on there. Yes, if I was trading the valuation, I might have a go at stuff like that, really. Maybe that even. Uh, but normally, when we've had a few touches here, I normally wouldn't trade something like that. There is kind of a second entry short there. Trouble is, that's a million miles from the EMA for me. Uh, I mean, the bar hasn't finished yet, uh, but I mean, it looks kind of nice like two legs. Sometimes these work, sometimes they don't, but I just can't take that so far away from the EMA. Uh, I don't think it's going to finish right anyway, luckily. Okay, so possible second entry short. Uh, because we've hit a new low here, I think I would prefer to wait for the the lower high. It's so tempting, isn't it? Okay, bar's finished a tick off neutral, so there's nothing I'd do there anyway. Uh, if I'm going to continue to go short here, I'd rather it be a little bit higher than this, push up a little bit and then drop. Uh, it doesn't mean it's, it's not going to drop down, it may do, but...
no setup there, unfortunately. Shame, because this is the type of setup that can tend to be really nice. Uh, nice channel straight through this. Couple of legs up, retesting this with the attention and going lower. Yeah, the second entry short there was more of a neutral bar, really. A great new eye. There is a lower high there, but it is a bit congested. Uh, it could work or it could not. I would prefer another test of this, more of a triple test. It's just hard to say, really. I don't like how that's finished. Could Triggy and push up. I've got no idea, but at the moment, there's just, no, there's just nothing there, really. See, we did go a bit sideways. We had a break out the top and a break out the bottom, so it could come back in. I don't think it will. It does seem very bearish at the moment. I'm just trying to see if there was a bigger channel that may work, but pff, there isn't really. Okay, so if there is a channel there... We've had a break and a new high. So whether there's a little micro with a break or a channel, either way, we've had a break and a new high. So I would prefer a triple test if I was going to take a short from anywhere around here. Channel down, nice looking channel, I think. Uh, leg and a leg.
Uh, have a look. There is a failure there, which has probably trapped a few shorts, but uh, you don't know how far it's going to go up. Don't really want to go long into this either. That's interesting. Got a sort of a double top there with a bearish bar. Same again, not getting involved because it may work, it may come down. But one, it's 10 ticks and it ain't finished yet. So a tick above, tick below, that's three points. And it's congested there. It may work, it may, but for me, that's a toss of a coin, really. Uh, so I'm just sitting tight, really. Could could go up, could come down. I got no idea really. It's not giving us a lot really. We've had this big push down with a break, couple of legs down. We seem to be going up and down and up. So I, I don't know at the moment. Nothing for me. Hmm. <sighs> Uh, there's like a failure there. Trouble is, we're in this range here at the moment, and there's no bloody space. I mean, what is this? Two, two and a half points from the middle line to the bottom. There's just nothing really, is there? Uh, normally, at the top of a range, I'd have a go at something like that. Uh, trouble is, you don't know whether it's going to trigger it and push up. At the moment, I'm, I don't know whether I'm looking for longs or short. I'm treating it as range rules at the moment, but there's so little distance to the bottom, and you just don't know what's going to happen when it comes back to the MA because it's it's not giving us a lot, really. I, I couldn't tell you whether to go long or short, really, at the moment. We've had a bit of side. We've had a break out the top, break out the bottom. We're back in this range again. Now, I'd say we've had this push-up. It's made multiple attempts to go up with quite a bearish bar. If you went long there or there, it's taken the stops out. So I think there's... More of a chance it comes down to these lows, but this I just I don't want to take a trade below the midline uh, of of such a small range because you just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, so if you take it there, say a tick below, may have squeezed two points but it's just too much risk for me really i just it be it miss you don't know how far it's going to come down just see if there's any type of a bigger change bigger channel sorting out I put it there before, didn't I? I think I did. I don't know. I just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't look right to me that, you know, these channels are going to look visually. Uh, I think if I'm going to do something like that, I'd rather go from here down, uh, in which case we may come down. See if you can recount there, and then that then would be a failure. Trouble is, it's triggered along, come down below it. It really could go anywhere. This I got no idea.
triple test lower high. I took it for a scalp good on you, mate. Yeah, I'm just unsure of where I think price is going at the moment. It does look rangy. Uh, but we've come down to the midline and pushed up. We've come down to the midline and pushed up again. So you don't know whether we got this channel with a break. You don't know after, you know, we got a big channel there with a break in a new, another channel there with a break in a new, new low. Uh, you don't know whether now we are going to go up. I couldn't tell you where, you know, I, it would just be a guessing game for me. Uh and if I'm having to guess where I think it's going, I obviously can't take a trade on it. Uh, you know, I can say there's be some longs trap there, maybe, and it could come down here. But equally, it could. There's going to be some shorts there and there, so it could just rock it up for another leg. Uh, I And there's going to be longs. If you took that short there, your stop's still intact at the moment. But it's then clogging up, isn't it? We're getting a bit congested, so it could come down, break below there, take the long out. It could push up quickly, take out that short. Any short stops that may be there, there's probably going to be some. It's definitely a failure. Uh, but then it's triggered yet and pushed up, and we got very close. So I think it would be more likely to come back up here. Uh, but it is just a guess the way that's looking. Uh, see, if you're thinking rangy now, we'll be looking for shorts, but look what happens. It, it triggers you. So a little bit of a pop there. So there's probably going to be some, there would have been a few stops there from the failure. Uh, so it just goes to show we're coming off these highs and all of a sudden we're, you're not even to the midline and we're taking out stops already. So that's just telling me I haven't got a bloody clue what's going on at the moment. Uh, it's just, it's it's congested and sideways and just unclear. Uh, it's sometimes these charts, as we know, are really easy to read, and other times they're just flipping knot. And at the moment, we're we're there. I think we're at the the flipping knot area. I reckon. Uh, so leg up. Let's have a look. So we got this on the NQ, we got this channel up and what looks like sort of two legs back. Channel up, one leg, two legs. We may trap some shorts there and push up. I got no idea. I got no idea. Could be one, one, two, three. This could be a triple test. If this finishes bullish, there could be a triple test. Uh, one, two, three. That could move up. It really could do anything. Uh, this is coffee time, I think. Yeah, so if you take a short there and think, yeah, you'll ride it down, what happens? Triggers just tops you out and ends up coming down again. Chart is being mean at the moment. Very meany. So after this, maybe the start of another channel, but it's just a bit too early at the moment, isn't it? If we can get down here and then come back up, then that may be a different story. But very easy to get sucked into going short here, and, and it may actually come right down, uh, and it may not. So we've got a touch, a touch, a touch. There's a failure there. You may be in there. Uh, you may decide to take that off this again, and it may absolutely come down. But uh, at the moment, really, it would be guesswork for me. Could really shoot up and take out any possible stops that are along here. Keep reminding myself, stay out of this. Stay out of it. 
when it's like this. It's very easy to go, oh, well, there's a failure, let's have a go at that, when ultimately it's congested and choppy. And I think the best course of action really is just to stay out. See, if you'd have got in there, think, oh, another nice bearish bar. So we got one, two, three attempts. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, you think, there we go. How many times have we touched that line? It's got to be coming down. Got to be. So you get in there short, all of a sudden it starts working back up. Uh, this market's very clever. Very clever at taking money. I really wouldn't be shocked if that pushes up and takes out any of these possible stops. This is going to have a push up, I think. Uh, I'd say that's probably going to go. Uh, depends how it goes. Sometimes if you have these good positions, sometimes they will hold. Uh, but I just don't like any of this at the moment. And when it does this sideways, it's got a habit of looking for stops. So I'd say there's more likely most of the stops are going to be below there, I'd say. Maybe some here short in the top, but that will be, I suppose, a safer... It depends whether you're taking your money. That will be a safer place, I think, once, twice, three times with a drop. Sometimes these, these safer bets, uh, you've got more chance of keeping your stop intact. That's one thing that I've noticed. A lot of times it'll come back, maybe pick off a few weaker ones, but where the majority ones will be can often be safe. Uh, Okay, folks, uh, it's defrying my brain at the moment. This is so I'm going to make myself, I don't know what's going on. It's bouncing all over the place. I'm going to make myself a quick cup of coffee and I will be back in around about three to four minutes.
Okay. Uh, I've just watched it actually, Max uh, video. <laughs> I thought I'd put it on quickly while I made a cup of coffee. Little bugger, isn't he? <laughs> he did it quite well, actually. Uh, he was certainly believable. Uh, right, okay, let's ditch that. So, little devil, yeah, do you go? Yeah, it, it, it was quite realistic, i got to say. Uh, yeah, he did so he could send him a tongue lashing. <laughs> At least he's got a sense of humour anyway. I like a sense of humour, I do. I don't, most of you guys, well, a lot of guys you know me, I don't take many things seriously. Uh, let me have a look. Uh, let me have a little look. Yeah, I'm a bit of a practical joker. Uh, mm. Another triple test. Uh, short. Yeah. Uh, just looking that the uh, NQ there kind of looks like the top of a channel there. So. Yeah, just not sure. It's a little bit stacked up, isn't it? It's trouble is whenever I tend to get in on stuff like this, I end up getting slaughtered. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad he uh, told people quite quick because you're probably going to have some people who've just paid $125 to uh, to be a member for a year and then all of a sudden, you see first video you see, he says he's retiring. <laughs> so, uh, I'm glad he didn't leave people too long because I bet there was a few people uh, feeling a little bit shocked, weren't there? Uh, i got to say, he, he is an integral part of uh, Pat's trading, isn't he? Uh you know, and he has been ever since I've been with Pat's, which is coming up three years. So I think we're very fortunate to have him, you know, on a regular daily basis. You can, you know, you can message him and he always, like he says, he always returns the messages. I've sent him maybe, I don't know, over the last sort of three years, probably a dozen messages, maybe a little bit less. Uh, and he's always returned and it, it's never a one liner you know, he'll always write plenty. You know, he's never just, just a quick couple of words and then moves on. He takes time to do that. Uh, and I don't think there's many teachers who teach price action trading, well, teach any type of trading that charges so little and puts in so much effort and so much of his time. So I think we're lucky to have him. Uh, it's certainly the best thing that's happened to me in trading. There are so many people who could rip you off in this business. There's, you know, there's so many people out there which just want to take your money and give you very little for it. And what Mac does is takes a very small amount of your money and gives you one hell of a lot for it. So, uh, you know, I think I could safely say we're about as lucky as we can get coming into this business. You know, as a new as a newbie. You get a lot of value for money, one hell of a lot of value for money. It would be nice to have him just to come on a stream or just not on about my stream, just a live stream. You know, when he's coming up to retirement, just to have a chat with people and ask some questions and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Just, a, you know, a little bit of fun, if anything. Just a bit of chit chat. People can fire some questions at him and, you know, just get to know him a bit because he has been such a big... I might message him actually and just say, it'd be nice for you to just do a live stream maybe once in a blue moon, you know, after you finish trading maybe, just just to sort of, you know, a bit of Q&A. He's played such a big part in our lives, certainly as mine. It'd be nice to just be able to have a bit of a real-time talk, a few questions, a bit of a laugh, you know. Uh, but it would be really nice, that. So stacking up a little bit up and down. It's just so hard to read this stuff, really. I mean, I think it's safe to say we're ranging at the moment. How long it'll last, I don't know. I'm inclined to put that there. And I'll tell you why. We've had a break out the top, break out the bottom. We could come down 
but at the moment touch 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 we do seem to be working on here but it's such a small range it's about five points it's easy to get massacred now the range could come down to here i suppose uh, but there are such a lot of touches there and the reason i like to put that there is because we've had a break out the top often we get the equal amount out the bottom and then we're back into this same level again so until we come down here another time i'd probably be inclined to keep keep that sitting there for now uh, otherwise i'll end, i just as well put that up there and which i don't think it is actually Uh, just looking at this, this NQ. Uh, we've definitely got sort of like a, uh, a sort of bearish imbalance really, haven't we? Let me have a look. Yeah, we have. Uh, it's only of us a slightly though. I don't know whether it's, uh, Yeah, it's just, it's hard to know really, isn't it? It's still very choppy. Mind you, after such that big strong movement, see if you look at the daily, all we've done is go up and up and up, up a bit sideways, up a bit sideways. We've got to have a decent sized correction at some point. Uh, so perhaps we've got to lay down here. Uh, we can't keep coming down that steep. We'd have to feather off a bit, so perhaps that's what we're doing before we've moved down some more, maybe. Uh, so I'd say the probably safest trades would be to short. Uh, but unless you get something amazing looking here, uh, there's nothing I would have got into there. That one there, I suppose if you're going to short, that's not a terrible looking bar. So if you went short a tick below there, it came back a bit, but then it went down here. So it has certainly got comfortably two points. If you go at the bottom, that would have worked okay. So we've had this push up and it looks like a small break and a new high. Then we made two more attempts, uh, followed by, you may trap a few longs, uh, followed by a bearish bar. So that was good for two points, maybe a little bit more, two, two and a half points. Uh, we've had sort of a leg up with a bit of a break and we've had another bar there. But I just don't like this, so you just don't know what's going to happen. I'd say as it's at the top, there's more chance of it coming down. Uh, but I don't want to base me, me, me trades on it's got more chance of winning. You know, I want more of the high probability stuff. Uh, but if you're going to go short, that would be probably a... Uh, certainly one that you may choose. Uh, I tend to avoid them at the moment unless I can see three really nice touches uh, and it's a bit clearer, but there's not a lot from the top to the bottom, so you've got to be precise. I mean, if you'd have taken a short there, I mean, you've literally got three and three court points to the bottom, so you ain't got a lot of room for error.
Uh, the NQ certainly looks a little bit more bearish, uh, a little bit more, whether you'd count this or not. I, I mean, I, I've picked a point here and we're only really touching there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but we're touching three times on the bottom, so it, it kind of works. Uh, it's not the clearest one or the most precise one, but it, to me it looks kind of like it's slowly working. Yeah. Well, that's a tough day, isn't it? See, unfortunately, I think most of us that will have happened before most of us came to the charts. for payments uh jason how you doing yeah i use revolut uh when you're saying does anybody oh yeah uh i use revolut to have my payments go in uh it's not such an issue now because it comes from if if you get a payment from apex and you're and you well either uk or international apart from the us uh it comes through plain so plain uh I think plane convert it to, to British pounds to pay it. I have mine go into my Revolut account purely because the company they use, do you get payments in dollars or it's already converted and it's negligible what they charge us. I noticed, I, I, I looked at uh, when I got my payment this month, I looked at the, the exchange current exchange rate and it was about $6 off. Uh, over two thousand dollars so for me it's negligible uh whereas before having said that i still have mine paid into my revolut account but it comes in as pounds the old company it used to come in as dollars but i had the revolut steel account which was about 10 pound a month uh, but i got unlimited uh currency exchange at current market value so uh so I don't think it's an issue if it goes into your bank because it does come through as British pounds. So I'm I'm assuming that they do it all first. Otherwise, it, it, it you know otherwise it wouldn't because I've got a pound account uh, and uh, a, it's set up for dollars in my Revolut account, so I could get paid in either. So uh, I'd say you're pretty safe, bud. Uh, I mean, if you've got a Revolut account, by all means use it. To be honest with you, I like Revolut. I can send it. I got Barclays accounts as well. See, I can send money from my Revolut account to my Barclays account in a matter of seconds. Uh, dead simple. That doesn't cost me nothing. There's no fees, so I tend to have it in there anyway. It's just, it's just how I tend to manage payments. They go into one bank, and it's easy to keep, you know, keep track of them. So I like Revolut. <clears throat> I think the banking system over in the UK is screwed. Personally, it's the biggest con known to man. We put our billions and billions of dollars, not all mine, unfortunately, but we put all our money in. Uh, they take our money, invest it, make a shed load of money, give themselves massive bonuses, and we get below inflation for it, which is nothing. So it's it's a con. But I've got uh, Revolut, and I've also got Monza as well, and there's all sorts of little extras you get with these accounts, which make life in general easier, so... The banks, you know, Bartlett's and Lloyd's and that type of the the, the sort of mainstay banks are going to have to up their game and offer us something a little better. Otherwise, they're going to start losing money to these online banks. Uh, I mean, you could open up a Monza account literally in five minutes, uh, sort all the ID out. It's all done there and then. Whereas if you want to open a bank account uh, in the UK, you've got to phone up, make an appointment, go in, take all ID. It's a ball like it's so quick. In fact, when I signed up for my Monza account, my card came the next day. <laughs> Figure that one out. Uh, okay, so... Uh, I'm just looking on the NQ at the moment. Uh, I think the order of the day at the moment is probably short. Now, would I take that one? It kind of looks like the type of trade where it is which would work, but at the moment... I ain't taking nothing here because it is sideways. So as we know, most breakouts fail. So that may uh, come back in. It hasn't triggered anyway, but 
I'm just sitting tight at the moment. You're welcome, Jason. Where are you from anyway, bud? Where are you from? Always nice to have some new faces. Oh, you're London. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Uh, I was down, well, closer to there over the weekend. I was down in Winchester for the weekend, uh, which is about, it's about an hour run, I think. An hour run out of London. It's kind of a nice looking bearish bar that I would suggest that that would likely come down, but I ain't taking There's no setup for us, unfortunately. It could trigger and come back in. Uh, but we do seem to be slowly inching downwards. I would prefer a second entry short there if I was going to think about going short.
Take any trades today. No, bud, nothing as yet. Nothing as yet. There is a trade I would have taken. I'm looking at the thousand tick chart, the NQ as well. Uh, I'm going to do a little bar by bar about that later, I think. Uh, there is a lower high that I would have taken. I'll just drag this in a second. This is a thousand tick chart, the NQ. Uh, let's make this a bit smaller. That one there, I'd have taken the lower high. We see, we definitely got this sort of bearish imbalance, which is slowly sort of scooping down after that initial big push down. So we've had this channel and we've had what I would say a triple test. Let's just forget this one. So we've had a break. We've made one, two, three bearish bar there, lower high there, trapping some longs. That one I would have taken. Uh, probably to these lows, I'd have probably got out somewhere around about there, maybe. Uh, so I don't know how the point system works on here. So I would suggest something in the region of, uh, so if I was trading one contract on that, that would give me, uh, $115. So two contracts, $230. Yeah, it's about right. I go for two points. So... I'd say that will be somewhere around about right. Uh, one contract, $115, two contracts, $230. That's about somewhere where I like to be. So the lower high, I would have taken that. We can clearly struggling to get up. We've had a little break above this and we've come down. So that one, I would have taken that up. Uh, but I'm going to do a little bar by bar there, probably later or, or tomorrow, probably t maybe tonight. We'll see. Because I am, I noticed the Penguin Trader uh, <clears throat> is now trading the thousand tick chart of the NQ as well. He's noticed there's a little bit of uh, tra uh, trades, lack of trades, lack of good setups lately. Uh, I don't, I, I, mean, I could have a guess why, but I wouldn't really like to. I wouldn't have a clue really why there's a lack of trades lately. Uh, who knows? Uh, the, tr the thing is, when you're a retail trader, you don't know enough about the technical side of of trading, how the actual system works. You know, you hear rumours that, you know, the yes, you know, employ maths text to look at this. And no, I, I don't know whether that's true or not. Uh, I don't know why there's a lack of setups, but sometimes if you can sit here for four hours and, and not have a trade, you're not busy enough to be able to glance at another... Uh, another chart and I think it's worth it you know I think most traders trade more than one chart uh, some trade a lot more than one chart but uh, obviously scalping you know trading quite quick markets you don't have a massive time to think uh, it's not because a thousand tick chart last week market consolidate yeah it's been it seems to be like it for months mate for some reason uh, <coughs> but what I will say is I'll sh uh, let me think uh, what I will say is sometimes when you get these moves up, 
uh, on the 2000 tick chart, you may get three big bars, say, on a 1000 tick chart. Sometimes you'll get a pullback or a higher low in there. I've marked it a few times before. Uh, Sam, how you doing, bud? Uh, for me, one's enough. Sure, absolutely, mate. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, trade guys, it, re it, it really is, isn't it? It really is. Uh, but sometimes you don't always get it. But as I mentioned, that one on the NQ, that is one I would have taken. We've got one, two, three, triple test, bearish bar. I wouldn't have taken that one. Uh, but the lower high, I would have taken that one. There is a failure there. Uh, that one I would have taken, obviously, by the way it came down. Obviously, I wasn't the only one. Uh, a lower high. Now, at that area, we had sort of nothing, really. We were here. So there was nothing that we, would represent a setup. Now, bearing in mind, that's the the NQ. So let's have a look at the 1,000 tick chart, the ES, see if that gave us similar, similar pictures. Uh, no, it didn't really. But the, the thing is, if there's more detail, sometimes you will get those better setups. Uh, let me just see if I can find an example. Uh, not so much at the moment. No. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting that I heard that the uh the penguin trader was now trading the nq as well the thousand tick chart the nq so it's interesting just see if i can find those photos Sorry about that. Was that it or not? No. I took two photos a while back. Uh, so we got a lower high here.
Yeah, I've got these two pictures. I'll bring them in in a second. Yeah, I'm just going to bring these two charts in quickly. Uh, uh, yeah, so just put this up as well. So 2,000 tick chart down the bottom, 1,000 tick chart at the top. On both, obviously you can see the more detail here. On both charts, we've got a nice channel with two legs back, a beautiful two leg break and a push up. On the 2,000 tick chart down the bottom, we had no trade. You can see it, one, two, three bars and we had a break new high. Same again, 1,000 tick chart, two lovely legs back and a beautiful higher low. That was the 1,000 tick chart. I'd have 100% taken that. We still have the same move up, but because of the more because of the more detail, you can see the heart. I mean, I thought that was an absolute beauty, and it worked a treat. Uh, but sometimes, obviously, with a thousand tick charts, that the two thousand tick chart, you got half the amount of detail. So, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you know, I think it's good to have the, maybe another time frame and just to look at it because if we are struggling for setups, you know, then sometimes it's, it, if you can just have options. Uh, but the fact that he trades, the fact that the penguin guy is looking at other options, it was just out of, I just found it really interesting. So I'm going to put that there now. Uh, put that down there. Let's get rid of this. So we seem to be working between these two areas now whether that is a range now it's hard to say because we've only really touched the bottom so probably not and we had this channel break of a new low so maybe we're working i i, I don't know uh, felt mighty better off putting that back
What's his arm going? This is another slow, sidewaysy day. Okay, there is a possible lower high here. Yeah, I'm just not a fan. Uh, it's kind of rangy, but we've had a breakout there, pull back in, and we've had a breakout there, but I just don't know at the moment. There is a possibility we could start to be moving up. I, I just really don't know at the moment. Uh, don't want to go short here. I've got no idea at the moment, so I'm just going to have to sit tight to like, figure out uh, a bit of an idea of what's going on. Okay, it's, it's a doji, it's neutral bar anyway, so it's not really giving us anything. Could go up, it could come down. I got no idea. There is a possible second entry long. Trouble is, it could trigger and come back in here. I, I, you know, as for what direction we're going, I really don't know at the moment. We've obviously had that big strong move down. We've had a break, and we've had another move down. And now, really, we're going up. We're going down. So we're going up and down, really. So you know, as we've had this other channel and a break and new low, we could now be slowly working up. But it's it's could. Uh, that's as good as I can come up with, really. <laughs> Got another email. Now, I appreciate you, mate. Thank you for using it. Uh, it's much appreciated. How are you doing anyway? All right. I'll send you for a bit. <laughs>
No, you guys don't need to thank me. You help me out. Uh, I'm the one with the thanks. Uh, you guys don't have to use mine. You can use anyone you like, really. So thank you. Uh, anybody? Anybody else? You got any trades? Anybody else in any trades today? I just got no idea at the moment. Uh, yeah, it ends today. I'm not sure what they'll have. Passed it yesterday. God, I tell you what, I, I'm crap at trying to pass them in a day. Uh, I just trade ten contracts and it just doesn't work. You just get you get mowed down too quick. I don't know the best way. Well, I said I don't know the best way. Uh, two triple tests. I just, I just got no idea about the triple test wise where we're going up down. Uh, I think the only way that I know of to pass them relatively easy. I mean, you're obviously going to lose some trades just to trade the news. Uh, where was the news anyway? Yeah, where was the news? Three o'clock. Was that the news? Was it? I think that was the news. It was three o'clock. Uh, let's open that up a bit. There. So that was the news there. So I don't exactly know where it went there, but it pushed up. So if you'd have taken a trade, I don't know, if you'd have gone long there, you got to get six and a quarter points, haven't you? Uh, so it went up, side was up, side was up. So depending on where you took it there, it did come back a little bit, but not enough. If you come back to there, not enough. So going along there would have worked. The short wouldn't have done. Uh, in fact, I think I'll probably be better off the amount, the amount I throw away. Uh, crazy is I have taken three trades or winners. Good for you, mate. Good for you. Indeed, 93 trades today. There's always one show off. <laughs> it's, in, we don't like you today, Indy. Because <laughs> you're putting us all to shame, bud. Yeah, I mean, it depends how you, it depends how you trade this. Don't, you know, it might, it might be an ideal chart for some. Uh, Uh, what do we do here? What do we do here? I think the only ones I can see was that failure there uh, after we've been up here a bunch of times, which worked. I think it went for a little over three points. It did pull back a touch. You may have got out in that first run. I try and like to get out in that first run, but sometimes it doesn't always work that way. But, uh... So, yeah, you may have done. It's hard to say, but obviously when it came down here, it came down to three points. So two points comfortably to got from that. The trouble is when it's starting to go like that, it makes me nervous about taking trades. Is there anything I'd have taken here? Mm, maybe on an evaluation, but not on a PA account. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. The only one I can see is on that thousand tick chart, the NQ, which is the lower high there. One, two, three, triple test for sure. Bearish bar there. Uh, and then we had the lower high, maybe trapping some longs. That one I'd have taken and got out for the bottom. Uh, but on, on the 2000 tick chart, nothing really, I don't think. Sometimes when you look back later, uh, you see stuff a little bit. But at the time... You've got to make a quick decision. Uh, and I think if you've got doubts or something doesn't feel right, you're best off just staying out of it. Uh, but that one kind of makes sense. Uh, second entry long, I suppose, and maybe th people going long there. But you can clearly see we're using this as some support. Uh, but it's a little congested. But, you know, I've heard a few people say you can trade congestion as long as you know what's going on. Uh, so although some things are congested sometimes, they're still sort of clear to a degree. Uh, so that one, uh, I would have taken again. But at the time, you know, it's all right with hindsight, isn't it? Uh, but at the time, quick decisions and that. I always often find if I'm pushed for a decision and I've got to make a decision quick, if I'm not sure or I've got doubts, uh, then I just usually stay out of it. Because uh, there's nothing worse jumping into a trade when you've got a doubt and it goes against you and you think, why didn't I just listen to that little voice inside? Instinct goes a long way here. Instinct plays a massive part in trading. Uh, 
there's so many different variables and so many different uh it's not black and white there's so much gray area you can't literally uh, have everything written down on a piece of paper you've got to rely on what goes on in the back of your mind when you're looking at these pictures stuff that you've experienced and built up those little those little pictures in your head you have to sort of a lot of it is down to gut feeling and instinct does this look right does it feel right and i think if it doesn't or you've got doubts uh, you're always best off and i try and stay out of those sometimes patience uh, beats you a little bit and, and you may decide to get in but I like to think I'm getting more strict uh, hopefully not too strict but uh, I mean it is a little bit sideways and a little bit unpredictable uh, and obviously we had that big push down initially uh, but the trouble is do you trade that do you get in there where do you get in uh, wasn't a whole lot of setups really I mean really if you want to take a failure or something like that, that one the trouble is with that one you're right at the bottom of the channel same with that one uh, I mean you know if you if you want to sort of have an educated punt that might not be a bad place what I find is and I've done this over the couple of weeks whenever we get a pull back a green bar like this it tends to cross over and come down it did exactly the same there finished on a bull bar bullish crossed over came down same again there, finished on its high, crossed over, a couple of ticks up and came down. Whenever it tends to do that, uh, often we do push down. It is something I'm looking at to add add to my sort of sort of portfolio of trades. But yeah, whenever we get that bit of a pullback there, uh, it comes down. But it's very sideways and a bit choppy. Okay, so we've pushed above this, made a new high, and a really big bearish bar. Uh, does that mean we're coming back in? Not always. I trade really small, but often, and lowly MN micros. Yeah, it's a number of trades showing my stats are a bit misleading. Hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I get. I get the trading on the micros. The thing about micros is sometimes, uh, obviously, with the risk less, you know, there's a, a bit less stress involved and you might sort of go, you know, the trouble is stress plays a certain part and sometimes I suppose it can keep you out of a trade. Uh, but, I, I, you know, you've got the option to go for bigger moves, really. Haven't you? There's definitely options in micros. I get why people trade them. I, I do. Let's have a look. Is there any type of channel going on here? Uh, it's 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 a possibility. Uh, I got nothing more there. There's that big bearish bar there, which is triggered. So are we going to go up? Or are we going to come down? I really do not know. And as long as my answers, I do not know, then there's nothing I can trade really. Just try that again.
Be a lower high there. I'm just looking at the NQ rather the channel to break new high. Big bearish bar looks like there may be a few longs trapped there. It may come down for another leg. That uh, if that is a channel, we've had a break, we may work down. It's hard to say. Yeah, okay, so are we making this on the low? We had a bit of a drop there. So, yeah, there's kind of a lower high, but it just, I much prefer it when they sort of at least match. Uh, but yeah, it's, 
I just don't like taking trades like that. Because uh, you just don't know. Is it going to come down this side? Probably. Possibly.
slow again, sideways. This is boring. The back collected in the bottoms. Mm, I've done that a couple of times from here. Mm. What I'm thinking at the moment is we've had this channel with a break. We've had this channel with a break and new low. We've had one attempt to go higher, second attempt to go higher. It's just hard to say at the moment whether we're going to come down or go up. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, I would think this would more likely be more of a range. It's, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, mm. not sure about that. Not sure about anything at the moment. It's hard going today, it's slow. I mean, for the last two hours, we've just done that. Down, up a couple of times, down, up, down. Okay, let's see if we hold here. Uh,
Uh, a bit of both, actually, mate. <laughs> uh, somebody mentioned that uh, a minute ago, uh, and I've tried it a couple of times. Personally, I would like to see a channel down there with two attempts to go higher, followed by a failure. So I'm just putting that there out of curiosity. But so we've had this strong push down with a break. We've had another channel with a break and a new low. So we could be slowly working up. It's hard to say. I got mixed feelings. So if we can get one push up and then maybe a second push up, like two nice legs, then I may think about a short. But at the moment, I'm just sort of sitting tight and kind of working out what's going on. But uh, it's hard to say, really. <clears throat> How are you doing, Kev, anyway? See, I'm just looking on the NQ. What's the NQ telling us? Let's have a look. It's going to be in that. I would say the NQ is more of a range. Good on you, mate. Uh, I got three points out of that lower high rejection. You know about that one there? Yeah, good on you, mate. I have a spike and channel. I have a spike and a big channel off the break of the channel. For a new low of the day. So you're coming from here then, aren't you, somewhere? I did try it up here just to see if anything happened. Let's have a look. Uh, that actually doesn't look that bad there, in all fairness. Uh... My my slight concern with that is, well, have I got a concern with it? I don't know. Max chart only had some short-term trends here. It's a bit hard to read today, in all fairness. We've got a touch, touch, and a touch. So that could uh, sort of bring it down. It's certainly possible. Uh, but in all fairness, I'm, I'm not really not sure. I'm not comfortable with anything. What I will say at the moment is we do seem to be going sideways. Having said that, we do slowly seem to be working up. I mean, is that anything? It could be. It could be nothing. We could get a second attempt to go higher, uh, and then it could come down. So i got mixed feelings, really. There is a possibility of something bigger. Let's just put that back again. Is that a channel there? It's hard to say. It might be, and it might not be. You're confused. Yeah, I'm just not sure about anything, really. Uh, you seem to have something. If that's right, you'd expect that to come down. Okay, so let's get rid of that. If this is a range, you'd expect it to come down, which is another thing pointing towards downwards. But then you've got this, and it seems to be bouncing off it. It may be nothing. Sometimes It just might mean that there's... If you look there, there's, there's some congestion there, so it may just be... It may just be struggling just to get through that. Look, I mean, look, there's a few touches there, there, there a bit. So it just may be struggling to get through that. Uh, I really don't know, to be honest with you. I'd like to see, we've had one attempt up and a bit of a rejection. I'd like to see another attempt and some more rejection. That may push it through this. Whether it is, whether that is anything or whether it's just more this, I'm not sure really. Uh, and I think it's okay to be not sure. Uh, you know, you don't have to know what's going on all the time. You know, we're Max A, you just can't trade this stuff. Not necessarily this, but sometimes when it's like this, Max says you can't trade this stuff. The the skilled trader is sitting out. And if the skilled trader can't work out what's going on, uh, when I say skilled, I mean the seasoned trader, you know, what, what, what chance have the likes of me and you got? So I think the sensible thing to do at the moment is just to sit tight until you can start figuring out where it's going because it's doing multiple things, really. I mean, if we zoom out, we had this big push down and a break. 
uh, two legs down to a new low. Now we had another bit of a channel and another break and a new low. So it could slowly be working up or it may be going sideways, priming for another push down. As far as I can say, what I'm saying here, there's a lot of coulds and and, and when there's a lot of coulds, it, it, it's really just sort of an educated guess, nothing more. So I don't really want to trade based on an educated guess because an educated guess might mean it's 60% chance instead of 50% chance. Uh, it's really hard to say. Uh, is that a channel up? Same again, I don't know. I think it's probably more likely the safest option is just to see it as a range because ultimately it is just going sideways. So whether... I mean, it may not be fitting perfectly as a range, depending on how you draw it. You may draw it down here, but nonetheless, it's going sideways. So I think the safest option is maybe to forget uh, about trading in a certain direction. When I say direction, I mean either, you know, we're in a downtrend or, or an uptrend, because we could be in either, really, or we could be in nothing. Uh, I suppose sideways is an option when... You know, people don't know what's going on. I mean, the volume's clearly low. You can see that. And I think a lot of that's down to the fact that it is going sideways. Range your channel. This is going down. You think so? It may do. It may do. You know, I I, I think after a big move like that, uh, I, I wouldn't be shocked if it came down some more. I wouldn't. Uh, it can't go down at that speed forever or at that sort of, how steep that is forever and then we feathered out so it may go sideways a bit and then come down so at the moment i'm really not sure uh who knows I mean, it seems to be finding something there doesn't it but may oh, i don't know i think it's okay to be unsure sometimes this market is so predictable you can almost set your watch by it but and then other times it's just it's unpredictable uh, and I think the key is is when it's unpredictable just trying to hold that patience back and let it sort itself out uh, because there will be lots of traps around here uh, What I will say is it's trying to go higher, which tells me it seems to be struggling to go higher, which tells me it's more likely to come down. Uh, we've got this channel down here with a break. We've had one attempt to go higher. There is a small break below there. But I don't think really think that makes a difference. Uh, I've seen Penguin Guy take, you know, a, a trade of failure when we've already had a new low from the channel. Uh, So we've got a channel down. Let's call that one attempt to go higher, a second attempt to go higher. I'd much prefer that to push higher in the top of that body to sit under there. If we get that type of scenario, then I may decide to go short. Uh, we've had the channel down. We have tried and, and it's been rejected there relatively strongly and we're having another go. Trouble is, if, if you give in to that lack of patience, you know, because we all want to try and get a trade. Uh, but ultimately, you know, patience always has a limit. You know, we may sit here for three hours, four hours, even six or seven hours, but at some point that patience will slowly. And I think it's finding that sweet spot, isn't it? If you find you're trying to, trying to find something and put something together, I think that's the time to 
to sit back trying to work out okay well that is one push if you if you do this like that so it could do this and then jump in uh if you're finding yourself doing that trying to work something out or trying to make something work uh i think it's good to just sit tight there because nothing worse than you sit how long we've been going here two hours and 40 minutes nothing more frustrating than sitting here for two hours and 40 minutes with the patience of a saint you take a weak position and it ends up drilling you stopping you out uh Let me just check he's not bouncing off something. <laughs> so I'll consider that one as a first attempt to go higher, a second attempt to go higher. So if we can get another bar now and break above there, come up here and then come short, that would be a triple test, maybe trap in some higher lows so it could come down. Uh, let's just have a look what we're seeing here. Yeah, there is, mate. You're not wrong. I would prefer something like that to push out of here and sit on the top, just under the top, something like that under the top as a triple test. That may uh, encourage me to get in there, but at the moment... Uh, so, I think regardless, it's clearly just going sideways at the moment. It is, isn't it? It's just going sideways. Now we've come down a little bit more. It's it's clearly just doing that at the moment. Uh,
Okay, about another 15 minutes, I think, and then I'm going to uh, call it a day. It's a slow go in this afternoon. It's just lots of chop. We've had a few little moves, but unfortunately, no setups really. And then we start going like that, which is just not ideal. There was a lower high there, but it's just a bit far from the MA for me. Uh, as we come down, there's, I mean, one, two, you may call that a triple test there. Uh, once, twice, three times, I don't know. Uh, and then it pushes up. That probably one that I may have taken again, that failure, it went for about three points all in all. Uh, nothing else really that gets me excited. Excuse me. Yeah, there's a lot of this, isn't there? We are getting some movements. Unfortunately, no setup in that move. No setup there. Nothing from here. I don't know. You may have taken that. I don't know. One, two, three, triple test. Might, might mark that. It's hard to say. It kind of is, isn't it? We've got a leg up there, and as we have a break, you'd probably think we get another leg up. So one, two, three. So that might not actually be a bad trade. Uh, one, two, three. What was the risk? So if you'd have gone a tip below it, it wasn't a huge risk. It's about two and a half point risk, uh, and that clearly worked. So that might have been an option. One, two, three. Trouble is, when you have something like that and you have a couple of legs up, you're naturally thinking about coming down. But uh, I'd have preferred that if we'd have triggered that bearish bar, which we didn't. So I don't know. I'd be interested to see what Matt makes of that if he if he's <laughs> if he really hasn't retired. Uh, failing that that failure again, I'd have probably had a go at that. It is a little bit congested, but we clearly made two attempts to go higher. So. Uh, I might be on the fence a bit with that one. <laughs> but it's a bit hard today. There's not a lot of setups and it's quite choppy. We had that big move down. The trouble it is, uh, where would you have tried? I mean, this happened quite early, so... Uh, I mean, setup-wise, there's not a huge amount, really. Uh, and then it just goes, doesn't it? Sometimes when it goes like, we all sort of kind of think, oh, I'd love to forget this sideways and get a trading market. But sometimes when it does this, it's just no, there's just no input, unfortunately. Uh, but in all fairness, if I could get three two point trades in a week now it doesn't seem like a loss i was talking to daniel a couple of weeks ago and he said he was averaging three trades a day i'm talking about three trades a week now if i'm you know if i've got a uh actually there is a setup on the uh hot tip that i take the nq that i take i am thinking down at the moment we got one two three there's a triple test there i'm gonna mark that one Let's have a look. Uh, one, two, three, triple test. Uh, we've had this channel down, one, two, three. 
So I'm going to mark that one as a possibility, uh, as a trade. We'll see what happens. Uh, if it works, I'll bring it in. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I'm trading two contracts on a $50,000 account, $600 a week, three trades a week, it's 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 well over $2,000 a month. Ideally, in an ideal world, if you ask me what, what would I like to be earning per account, I'd say $2,000 trading two contracts. I don't think it's unreasonable. You know, three trades uh, a week on average. Uh, so let's say three trades a week. Let's say two weeks. That's six trades. If you're trading 80%, eight, let's say, for instance, you've got an 85% win rate, you should make $2,000 uh, on, a, on a, a PA account trading three trades a week. Uh, it's not a lot, really. Obviously, if you're trading three days a week, you're going to have to sit through two days where you're going to take nothing. Uh, but it's having that patience to do it. Uh, but we sat here for nearly three hours now and haven't taken a trade. My patience is definitely getting better. Uh, but you really can't trade this. There's just not a lot here. Well, t I say that. Trading pats anyway. There's not a lot of pat setups now. You know, if you've got a different... Uh, a different variety of, of, of strategy you may decide to sell something like that uh, in which case it would have worked you may decide to, you, you may decide to just buy at the bottom and sell at the top and, you know if you're if you're sort of selling here and putting your stop up here uh, then that type of strategy may work but you know just speaking from from pats which I trade there's not a <sighs> failing that one you may have Matt Mark may may mark that and he may mark that Knowing, knowing Matt, though, he'll probably mark about another 25 before the end, but uh, uh, there's just not a lot. It's after that initial move, which sort of most of it happened really before the, the sort of main trading started. We're around about 2.30 UK time we had this, but then it's a little bit choppy. And then uh, so three trades a week, you know, if I can get three trades, anything above that's a bonus. It's just the way it is sometimes. Mind you, about three weeks ago, I had three trades in one hour, all absolute beauty. So that's like a week's worth of trading there. So hopefully we get the odd day where we may get a couple in a day and that, that might, you know, speed the process. That is so slow. Let's see if we can trap some longs here. Order filled. You hear me sell something, don't panic. Uh, it's just on that sim. Uh, that one trade. And then now I've entered it, it's backtracking. <laughs> uh, we'll see anyway. Maybe we get the triple test now. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's just on a sim. I'm just uh, trading that that failure I mentioned. Looks like it's going to lose anyway. Uh, just trying to have a play around with the thousand tick chart and see how it works.
Okay, one, two, three, possible triple test. We're struggling. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, you can see it on here, actually. Uh, in fact, that needs to go up a touch. Uh, I didn't realise it was showing there. I thought it was just showing on my other. Uh, that was the one I was looking at. It's not as nice on here as it is on the thousand tick chart. Stop, Phil. Okay, so that didn't work anyway. That was just a sim, incidentally. Just gonna uh, order get submitted. One ready, see how this falls. One, two, three. It is a triple test. <laughs> see how big the bar is. See how it finishes. Hmm. Interesting. It's quite a small risk, so Order cancelled. Too fat out speaking. Yeah, I've got it down here. I think it's 550, I think. Is it on now? 505? I'm not sure. Doesn't tend to have a massive uh, impact medium news. Uh, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. oh, this is hard going today.
Uh, I think it's going to be a blank today, which is okay. Uh, it's not a great day, really, to be fair. There's a lot of this, and it's been very slow. I was just looking at this on the NQ. We've got a channel down, maybe one, two, three. Uh, fail breakout. It's like a second entry short. It may work, but I'm just not so sure. Retracted anyway, so it's in there now. Okay, so that's me done for the day. I think I've done me three hours, little over three hours. Not an easy day today. There was a big movement done. I don't know, maybe as you've had a go at this, trouble is this happened before I got to the charts. This was it quite early, this was. Uh, so it just depends how you trade, really, whether you've had a go at something like that or not. I don't know, but uh, I wouldn't have done, really. I like to wait till it comes in contact with the EMA. Uh, so I'd have, I'd have probably wait for a break there. Unfortunately, well, that might not have been a bad call. There, we had two legs back and a little bar finished to tick off its low. So that might not have been a bad. Uh, where's that? Like, realistically, you're talking a point and a quarter channel down there. Uh, we've had two lovely little legs up. Nice little bearish bar. Tick off its low, point and a quarter. That'd be worth the risk, wouldn't it? uh work to trade so i'll be surprised if mac doesn't mark that one uh, a little second entry short after this down uh small risk failing that there's a failure there oh, i see i am an hour about that <clears throat> a lot of the times mac would say as long as you've got room to the 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 ema uh, which you haven't really got a lot there i don't even think you got a point to this so it's, it's one of those things isn't it you just it's hard to say really I mean, after this and the break and the new low, you don't know whether it's going to maybe trap you, come down here and bounce and push higher, uh, which is why I kind of left it. It's I just didn't feel massively comfortable about it. Uh, I keep looking at it. Uh, I mean, it could have could have come up to these highs and tested these highs again, in which case you may have been trapped. Uh there's no room to the EMA really. This I don't. Know, there's a point if you take it a tick below, you're on the EMA in three points, uh, uh, three ticks. So uh, it's just hard going in this. It's so easy to get messed up in this stuff. Uh, most of the the afternoon see is moving with the thirteen points. In fact, most of it's working less because we haven't really got down below there. Uh, that's as low as we've closed. Uh, for the last two hours really uh, so you've got even less distance from top to bottom you've got 10 points the only place to short from really is up here whether you may have taken that you may have done it, it might have worked but i just don't like it when it turns over three times like that and then just drops it may come back up it's hard to say and especially as we're coming off the bottom here there was always that possibility that there may be something bigger there so same again if there is something bigger, you've got to be so careful. Uh, but I think, in all fairness, it's more likely that it's just sideways and a bit choppy today. Uh, <coughs> tomorrow you will be happy to try. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, how are you doing, ES, anyway? <laughs> yeah, I, I, it doesn't... I don't really feel that urge to jump in like I used to. As the day used to pass, I can't remember how many times I had a... Uh, I had really patient days and then within the last five minutes I took something absolutely horrendous and you're kicking yourself. I don't mind. As I mentioned earlier, if I can get three nice setups in a week, you'd expect if you can wait patiently, you'd expect to win 85% of them. That's two thousand dollars a month trading two contracts. Two thousand dollars a month with ten ten accounts. There's a lot of money to be earned, even if you could find, you know, a measly three trades a week. Uh so, but not an easy day today. Uh, a lot of just whipping. It doesn't look 
like it's chopping people up. I can't see huge amounts of traps, in all fairness. Uh, there doesn't seem to be many. Uh, I mean, there was a sh there was a maybe a failure there which triggered and stopped you out. So there was probably one there. Same again. You may have gone long, bouncing off this, pushing up that, triggering stop. So there's a few, but it doesn't look its normal whippy self when it goes like this. It's just very slow, and it is just slowly consolidating, really. So it's just unfortunate. There's not really a lot you can do there. You may take a, you know, if you play the numbers game, really, most of the time where it bounces off the top in a range, it'll come down enough to make money. But, you know, I tend to try and wait for the ideal setups, really, rather than just play the numbers game and go more short when it gets here and, go, you know, go long when it gets here. But I like to try and, you know, keep it keep it as straight as I can, really, and, and you know, as... Uh, as you know, disciplined as I can, uh, I wouldn't consider myself generally a disciplined person in life. Sometimes I succumb to, you know, sometimes I give in or whatever. I I'm a driven person. If there's something I want, I pretty much always get it. Uh, or there's something I really want to do, you know, I I'm driven like that. But you know, sometimes I I get given into temptation, but I kind of like where my discipline level is at the moment. My skill level, I think, is is okay enough to make money. Uh, the bit I was having problems with is is when I take a a loss or a couple of losses in a day, I tend to come back and go a bit mental. But that is gone. I don't feel it anymore, and I'm not scared getting into a trade. So whether that's just how it, you know, I'll, <coughs> I've spoken to some a couple of traders I chat with people who've been doing you know season traders and they say it kind of happens like that you just stop doing it you know we all everyone does something stupid and the emotions get the better but at some point it just starts to go uh you know some one guy said it's just the kind of aha moment that you go ah why isn't it that like this before so uh so I would say the way my trading is at the moment I'm pleased more and more bits of the puzzle are being slotted into place so I'm definitely sort of moving that slow forward. I'll take two steps and one back, but I, I think it's safe to say now the seesaw is tipped in my favour. Uh, I'm doing enough things right to make money, uh, and obviously I had this issue with the with the the blowing accounts and and not accepting a loss and, and not walking away. But I seem to be able to do that now. So hopefully, uh, if we can get some setups. Uh, I'd like to see my equity curve slowly start to continue higher. So that's it today, folks. Not the most exciting day of trade, and I hope I haven't bored you. Some days I, I talk a lot, other days I'm quite quiet, but uh, uh, a slow day, a bit boring, but, it, you know, it happens sometimes, and you kind of can't do nothing about it, really, unfortunately. Uh, but it's it is useful to have that lesson in patience, and sometimes these days uh, do you some good, I think. Uh, because there are so many elements to trade in and patience is one of them. Uh, so there you go. It's going to be a short week this week. We're on Wednesday tomorrow. We obviously had the bank holiday weekend. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we're in April already. Unbelievable, isn't it? It doesn't seem five minutes ago since we were chatting at Christmas. So so there you go. I appreciate all your comments. Uh, if you're carrying on trading, best of luck. I hope you finally get out of this and get some sort of direction. Uh, so if you are just... Uh, just take care through all this. It can do you some damage. This much better to get. I get a kick when I go away at zero for the day. I get quite a buzz out of that because I've done my job. All my job is to sit and wait for a trade. It's not to make money. Making money really is a byproduct of taking good setups with good discipline. But sometimes, you know, if you don't take a trade, the money doesn't come in. But I'm, I'm also someone else. You're welcome, FSN. Someone else said to me, "Stop trying to make money." And just think about the trades. Forget trying to make money and the money will follow you. So, you know, sometimes people say these things to me in my daily life that stick in my head. And and, and that's that's one of those ones. Stop trying to make money. Uh, you know, it is a byproduct, isn't it? And, and, and a good byproduct. Uh, so there you go. So I'll be back same time tomorrow. So if you're carrying on, best of luck. Failing that. Uh, have a great evening. Stay safe. Uh, and hopefully we may get a better day tomorrow. So uh, uh, take care and I'll see you tomorrow.